was the young Giant quarterback Dave Brown crashing in. So now the Meadowlands is alive with that late touchdown. But folks, you haven't heard anything yet. Wait until they take down number 56. Let's go back to the Meadowlands and Al Michaels. Al? Well, Brent, the ceremony taking place here tonight could very well have occurred at the Superdome in New Orleans, but it isn't. Because in 1981, the Saints chose running back George Rogers with the first pick in the draft, and that left Lawrence Taylor available for the Giants. That season, the rookie from North Carolina propelled the club to the playoffs for the first time in 18 years, and by the time his magnificent 13-year career would end, he'd wear two Super Bowl rings and be regarded as arguably the greatest defensive player ever. As the years progressed and he fought his way through substance abuse troubles that nearly short-circuited his career and fought his way past left tackles and tight ends, his image of the last angry man was transformed into an ethereal one, almost as if he had dropped in from another world. And maybe he did because no one dominated a game and no one redefined a position more than a man known primarily by the initials LT. In a word, he was relentless. What DiMaggio and Mantle were to the Yankees what Gershwin was to Broadway is what Lawrence Taylor has been to the Giants. And that's why right now in Giants Stadium, they'll immortalize him. Ladies and gentlemen, number 56, Lawrence Taylor. There's nothing I can say to add to this moment. Your fans have said it all. They've spoken for all of us. But for 13 years, you've brought great honor to this jersey. Take care of it, and no giant will ever wear it again. You know, I should be nervous, but I'm not, because I'm in my house. I'm with my friends. You know, this is one of the three proudest moments I've ever had in John Stone. One being in 98, I mean, excuse me, 81, when we beat the Dallas Cowboys to go to our first playoff in 20 years. Number two, been in 1987, when we beat the Washington Redskins in the playoff game to go to our first Super Bowl. And now today, they have my jersey retired. Great moment. There's a lot of people I'd like to thank. Of course, I'd like to thank Mr. Mara for always being there for me, like a father, and his family, who treated me like one of the members of their family. Also, 
I would like to thank Mr. Tish for all his wisdom he's shown me over the last three years. I would like to thank Bill Parcells. I would like to thank Bill Parcells for being such a big part of my life and showing me how to play the game of football correctly. And I'd like to thank my family and my friends for always being there for me. But this is not about Mr. Mara and all the other people I have recognized today, even though their contributions have been great. This is about me and you. The Giants fans. Because you've always been there, no matter what was said, no matter what was written, no matter what was going on in my personal life, we've always been in this thing together. Without you guys, there would have been a Lawrence Taylor, but there wouldn't have been an LT. Thank you very much. Lawrence Taylor owns Giant Stadium one final time. 1979, the mandate was to lead the team to its first Super Bowl. The early years were filled with promise, but injuries to sins and generally mediocre personnel kept the Giants at arm's length from the title. Then in 1986, in his eighth season, Phil Sims guided his club to the NFC Championship, and in Super Bowl 21 against Denver, he was near perfect. On the brightest stage, Sims played his greatest game, completing 22 of 25 passes and winning the MVP award as the Giants mauled to Denver. Four years later, he blazed a regular season trail that would lead the Giants to another Super Bowl win, a triumph over Buffalo. He'd be forced to watch from the sidelines on crutches. By then, though, he'd become the people's choice because of his skills and heart. No quarterback consistently absorbed more punishment, and his resilience was what the Giants fans admired most. Tough guys should come to work with a three-day growth, mood dark and brooding, mud cake hands and a raspy voice. Phil Sims showed up every week with a Mountain Dew sparkle and a Kentucky lilt and craftsman's hands running through white blonde locks. Phil Sims gave Tuck a different look, and that's why his number 11 will be retired now. The PA announcer is Jim Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, number 11, Phil Sims. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the 50-yard line where Giants President Wellington Mara will make a special presentation. Phil, before I ask you to put number 11 on one more time in Giants Stadium, I want to tell you that the Giants plan to have our own Giant Football Hall of Fame someday soon here in our home stadium. It goes without saying that you will be one of the very first inductees into that Hall of Fame. And Lawrence Taylor also.
I think you both know that you are already in my own personal Hall of Fame. Phil, as I give you this jersey, I know that I share the mixed emotions of all the giant family. There are regrets and there is sorrow that this is the last time. But there is also gratitude and all abiding pride that you did wear our colors, you wore them so long, you wore them so well, and your wearing brought such honor to us. And now, number 11 is yours to keep always and to cherish, just as all of us will always keep and cherish the unforgettable memories you leave with us and the class that you brought to us. Thank you. God help. Thank you. Let me start out saying thank you to Mr. Mara and the Mara family for pro providing an atmosphere as an athlete that gave me every chance in the world to succeed. I also want to thank Mr. Tish for his wonderful help. Oh, no, no. And also, I want to say thank you to the late Tim Mara, who did so many wonderful things to help the organization. I stand here, foot, because of football, the greatest team sport in the world. I stand here because of a great team effort. I want to thank all my ex-teammates, all the coaches who made this possible, for me being here tonight. I want to say a special thanks to my family, all my brothers and sisters who supported me my whole life. Also, I want to give a special thanks to my wife and my children for putting up with a grouchy dad for 15 years. Before I go, I want to give a special thanks to one person, well, two people. First, George Young, for having the courage to draft an unknown quarterback out of Moorhead State in 1979. But I want to give a special thanks to a coach of mine, Bill Parcells, who helped me grow up as a man and make me reach my full potential as a player. I had two wishes when the Giants, and when we decided that I couldn't play no more. One, oh no, one, I wanted to run out of this field one more time. I got that wish tonight to see the fans one more time to let you know it took 15 years of hard work to earn your respect and it was well worth the effort. I will always remember the giant fans.
And lastly, for that second wish, I wanted to throw one more pass in my giant jersey. So, who better to catch that pass than the greatest giant player of all, Lawrence Taylor. One last touchdown pass for the ages. Bill Sims, number 11. His number retired tonight at Giants.